the property of chirality is defined as the property of being non-identical to one's mirror image. And we can use the idea of chirality in the context of everyday objects just as well as we can use it in a molecular context. Because whether a molecule is chiral or not influences its reactivity and some of its physical properties, it's important for us to be able to determine whether a molecule is chiral or not. And in this first set of problems, I'd like to determine the chirality of these molecules using what I call the fail-safe method. And the fail-safe method involves simply generating the mirror image of the structure and then trying our hardest to superimpose the two to see whether they are in fact the same structure or not. Since chirality is the property of being non-identical, being different from one's mirror image, we can also think of it as the property of having an enantiomer. When we apply the fail-safe method, if we find that the mirror image is not the same, in other words, we cannot perfectly overlay the two structures with no differences, then we know immediately that the original molecule is chiral, and also, in fact, that the molecule we drew is the enantiomer of the original molecule. So the fail-safe method has the added bonus of generating the enantiomer by design. So let's begin with the molecule in the upper left and start generating its mirror image. To generate the mirror image of a molecule, we have to reflect it through what's called a mirror plane. And I often draw the mirror plane kind of up and down at a diagonal like this. Imagine it's coming out towards you, say, on this end, and the other side is further back into the screen. The operation of reflection, which generates the mirror image, involves projecting each atom down onto this plane and then through it at an equal distance out the other side. And so this hydrogen atom would end up here, for example. This hydrogen atom would end up coming down onto the plane and then going through to about here. Notice how it's farther out from that original hydrogen, just as it is on the left-hand side. And then the wedges and dashes, in fact, remain the same. If you think about projecting this wedge onto the plane, it's still going to be a wedge when we move it through to the other side. In other words, that CH bond is still coming out towards us, and ditto for the other CH bond. It's still going away from us like this. When we project the hydroxyl group through, that's still going to be in an upward pointing position, like so. And the methyl group now will be pointing down and to the right. Notice that this CH3 is equidistant from the mirror plane with this CH3. So this is the mirror image, and now we're left to determine are these two molecules the same or not. And here, you need to do everything in your power using single bond rotations, rotations of the entire molecule, which can be difficult to visualize. A molecular model can help there. To get these two to overlay perfectly, if it's at all possible. If we examine these two molecules, we can notice that if we swing the molecule on the right around this way, so that the CH3 goes from pointing down to the right this direction to pointing down and to the left, we end up swinging the hydrogens around so that now there's still a hydrogen coming out and there's still a hydrogen going back. They are different hydrogens, strictly speaking, than the ones in the original molecule that were in those positions, but they're still hydrogens nonetheless. There's a hydroxyl group up here, and now the CH3 is down this way. And hopefully this picture makes clear that these two molecules are identical. So we can conclude then that this molecule is identical to its mirror image and that it is therefore achiral. What about the next example below? Well, we can go through the same process of generating the mirror image by reflecting through a mirror plane in this molecule. And I'll quickly draw out the results of that. Make sure to verify that this is in fact the mirror image by generating it yourself. And now once again we see that we can simply turn this molecule over and though I won't redraw it in the other orientation, these two molecules are identical. Another thing worth noticing which is that this molecule is completely flat. All of the atoms are coplanar, including the implicit hydrogens there. And so because of that, this molecule must be a chiral. Without some kind of three-dimensional structure in the form of wedged or dashed groups, a molecule's got to be a chiral. If we move down to the bottom right, we can again apply the process of reflection 
and draw the resulting structure. Now, now the resulting mirror image has the nitrogen still on a wedge. Make sure you understand how reflection leads to that and has double bonds here and here. And we see that we can simply tweak the molecule a little bit this way and it's identical to its mirror image. And so the original structure then is a chiral. Note that we can also say, of course, that the mirror image is a chiral. The two molecules are identical. Now let's look at the structure in the middle on the right. What happens when we reflect this through a mirror plane this way? Well, we'll have CH3 here. I like to start with groups that are relatively close to the mirror plane and kind of work my way outward. We'll have a single bond down this way, a double bond up this way, and a six-membered ring like so. Notice here again, like we saw for the top left case, that this wedged group, when projected through the plane, is still going to be wedged. I haven't drawn them exactly aligned, but this bond is going to remain a wedge. And so is this bond, for the exact same reason. And now the cyclopropane carbon is pointing out this direction. We can also draw, just to clarify the situation a little bit, implicit hydrogens here and here, and on the original structure those show up here and here. Now, are these two structures identical? Well, if I try, for example, to turn this molecule over, when I do that, I'm going to swing the wedged bonds to dashes and the dashed hydrogens onto wedges, right? That'll happen for both carbons. And so even though that lines up, for example, the cyclopropane triangular structure pointing kind of in the right direction, it messes with the orientations of the carbons and hydrogens at these critical carbons here, 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 and here. Those configurations don't match up now that we've done the reflection. But if we look again at the top portion of each of these molecules, we need to do this kind of flipping around in order to line up the methyl groups. So there's a contradiction here. We need to flip the molecule over to line up the methyl groups, but doing so messes with the alignment of the cyclopropyl portion at the bottom. As a result, these two molecules cannot be superimposed on one another, and the original structure is chiral. Naturally, of course, the resulting mirror image is chiral as well, and the relationship between the two structures is that they are enantiomeric, or they are enantiomers of one another. A similar kind of idea applies in the bottom left case. If we again reflect through a plane running this way, we'll have a six-membered ring in which the position of the double bond has kind of changed places. We're reflecting the wedged carbon-hydrogen bonds through a plane that's parallel to the direction of the wedge, and so those bonds will still be wedged in the resulting structure, and we don't need any of the finer details of the other cyclohexane ring since we just have CH2s on each of these four carbons on the right-hand side. So now we're left to ask, are these two molecules identical? Well, if we simply slid this over like so, we would see that the double bond is in an incorrect position. The double bond would end up over here, right? But we need it over here on this side. And so to move the double bond into position, we need to turn the molecule over using kind of one of the rotations out of the plane of the screen like we've seen before. But the problem with that is that while it lines up the double bonds, while it would put a double bond in the appropriate position, it would lead to dashed hydrogens. When we rotate with respect to an axis that's pointing straight up and in the screen, we swing those hydrogens from pointing out towards us to pointing back away from us. And now we've knocked the hydrogens in the two molecules out of alignment. So again, we see a contradiction. There's no way to line up both the double bonds and the hydrogens here and here without switching the positions of groups or doing something else that's energetically prohibitive. Consequently, just like we saw for the upper right case, both of these molecules are chiral and the two are related as enantiomers.